Hello and welcome everyone. Today I'm going to show you how we can copy dynamic content from a web table uh, in any of your web pages into an Excel file using QTP. The reason uh, we need to write specific uh, program instead of using a web element is that uh, if your content is dynamic then your web element will not get recognized which is stored within your web table and they keep changing. So we got to use combination of child objects and descriptive programming to be able to capture this data in any given web table on any given website and copy it into an Excel format. After you've copied that into an Excel format, you have the data available with which you could do further testing and compare it with what you expected versus what you received. So to do that, what I did is uh, I created a very simple HTML file and I stored some basic uh, two kind of different kind of tables. Uh, both are uh, three columns, but uh, the first one has three rows and the second one has four rows within it. Alright, so here is a very basic HTML uh, file with two tables in it. Now, uh, this is not a dynamic data, but what it means is that uh, if I use web element or an object spy on my QTP to search for these objects, it can still find each of these objects that are appearing. But what would happen is that uh, when the data keeps changing, your web elements will start to fail in your tests and the as the objects will not get recognized. All right. So how do we do that? To do that, uh, what I'm going to do is, number one, I created a blank Excel file and I stored it in my D drive folder. And here is the entire script that I generated. So let me quickly walk you down uh, the uh, code, what I have uh, written for it. So as I was mentioning, I used a combination of descriptive programming and uh, using uh, the child objects method to be able to find out uh, what are stored within each page. So the first on line two, as you see here, uh, is a simple uh, page with any name, uh, any title, any name on the browser, any title on the page. So I am assuming that I am having my uh, HTML page open when this test will run and make sure that that's the only page that is open. Second, I've created a description object for my table. So any object uh, in my web page which belongs to this description that is primarily the HTML tag is table, I can use it to capture. You could go further and say that uh, you want to capture specific table which starts with a column name. Then there's a property called column names that you could use. And you could say a combination of regular expression and descriptive programming. For example, if it starts with hello, then I can say hello dot star as a regular expression to say anything that starts with hello. After I have created the description object, I am going to use that on my page that is open at the moment, my web page, and uh, find out all the child objects that belong into that page which match this description property. And that description property, as I mentioned earlier, is table. You could also further add in other uh, more uh, properties to distinguish a specific table that you want. Finally, what I do is I get the table count out of the entire uh, list of tables that are generated using the child objects method. And then we go about creating an Excel application. The reason I want an Excel application is so that I can copy the information from the table on the website into the Excel file in a, in a, in a specific format that I want. But this code is very basic to copy as is. You could further customize it and say what color you want to put on each of the Excel blocks, uh, cells, and so on. So I've created an Excel application on line 17, and I've opened uh, an existing blank Excel file on my application. So after that, I have assigned a specific sheet with where I want the output to go into the sheet one. I start with my Excel row as one. That is where I will start to put in the data in initially. Now, I count is currently storing the number of tables that have been returned and that we have done on line 12 out here, right? So I count will store the number of tables starting with zero to table underscore count minus one would give me 
a recurring loop for all the tables. Now for each table that I get as an output, what I will do is I will first put that a heading saying that this is my first table like table number and give a count to it. So starting with one into the first row. Then we go into the number of rows. I use all tables with that specific array number to uh, uh, target to that specific table and count the number of rows. Now for each row and then each column within those rows. See out here I give I row count as another parameter for it. Once I've done that, I will capture the information that comes up in I row count, I call count. So basically, it will tell me that I will capture from the table the information which is stored in each row, each column and put it into a variable called cell underscore value. Now I'll take that cell underscore value and simply put it back into my Excel sheet that I created. Here's the Excel sheet and I'm saying cells. Now I'll say which is the row count and which is the column. The reason I used Excel underscore row is when this loop gets repeated, it will not overwrite on itself. It will start to write below it. So it will start to write all the tables below each other. Finally, uh, at the beginning of at the end of every table, I increment my row count with the total number of rows which was already generated and the overall uh, Excel underscore rows to where the cursor is at the time. And then we close, save and close the Excel application. <coughs> Alright, so now let me uh, show you a quick rundown on how it would work. So I'm going to open my explorer and show you the Excel file which is blank at the moment. And also go back to the table to show you. So quickly navigating down, somewhere here I stored the Excel file, there you go. So let me make sure there's no data in it first. So this is a blank table and this is the sheet that I'm going to use. I'm going to close this, I'm going to come back. This is the open web page or any browser uh, IE or Firefox that you have created or you could test the same code on different other applications. Now. Uh, let's go back to QTP and see, do a quick run. So I'm going to do F5. The test is going to run very quickly. And finally, we're going to see the output. So this is the first message box saying that we have two tables in the open browser. And finally, the code would get executed for all the rows. The test is completed. I got a result saying that the test is done. Now let's go back to our folder and see if any update was done on this Excel file. There you go. So now I inserted this as a custom table number one and table number two, but everything else that is there is the tables that we have uh, received from the open web based HTML file or your browser. All right. Uh, I hope this little tutorial uh, helps you on how you could capture dynamic web table content on an application and be able to uh, post it back into an Excel file. Once you do this, you could move on further to try and see how you could compare two different Excel files and see the results of it. Thank you everyone. Uh, hope uh, this was useful and uh, I'll try and keep updating uh, more videos on the YouTube. Take care for now.